Adam, what's in the box? The box? Oh, so let me talk about this box for a second. I pre-ordered this incredible thing a few months ago. Totally forgot that I'd pre-ordered it until it arrived in the mail a couple of weeks ago. That's the best experience. It is do. totally the best experience. And the, the this object that is in this box exceeded all of my expectations for coolness. Mm -hmm. Like what I saw in the videos and the promise of it and what caused me to spend a lot of money to pre-order it. And it's even more now that it's yeah. past pre-order stage. It exceeded all my expectations and it was very exciting. So I played around with it for a few days. I was finding that it's so delicate that I needed a way to cart it around. So I built this box. And it's gorgeous. I, I built it. This is, this is, I've gotten good enough, man, that this actually took me about three and a half hours from start to finish. It's only a half day build. It was crazy how it's, it went all together. But um, this is my delivery device for what is, I guess we should call the Robugtix Spider. Robugtix. Robugtix. T8X yes. Spider. Dun dun. That is terrifying. So yeah, my, my, my director on Mythbusters is like, I will step on that. I will kill it with <laughs> fire or a shovel. Don't bring it anywhere near me. Let's give people a little backstory of what this is and, and who makes it. Okay, so this is made by a Hong Kong company called Robugtix. And it is a platform using 26 super micro high-tech servos, mm -hmm. three in each leg and two in the uh, back tail here, and a controller uh, that has pre-programmed a whole bunch of walking and reverse kinematic sequences so that it is an incredible mover. It moves just like a spider does in terms of distributing its forward motion across its legs. So their big technology is the controller board and the algorithms to coordinate all the leg movements. Yes, but the algorithms that control the leg movements are not just walk forward, walk backwards, turn left, turn right. It's actually far more advanced than that. And it's from an animating standpoint, like having been a puppeteer and having built animatronic puppets, this thing blows everything I've ever seen out of the water. And that's because they actually use three motors per leg. Three mo yeah. A lot of robot spiders that people build simplify that, use three motors for maybe the entire body and then right. link them all together. And these guys actually make a hexapod that is much simpler in mm -hmm. terms of a walking platform, three and three and three and three. This is kind of their, their flagship right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just being delivered, uh, so I got mine just before Halloween on the in the first run. It's and, amazing uh, that they announced it as basically a prototype. Yeah, and and said, you know, if you want to get in on this, we can deliver it to you, like you said, by Halloween. But it's all three D printed parts. It's all three D printed parts, so the entire thing weighs three hundred grams. It is really 10 ounces, incredibly, incredibly light. Um, in fact, one of the heaviest things is this switch here up front, which isn't really a switch, it's just a glowing blue light that acts as the eye. <laughs> and it's, I, I mean, I totally get the aesthetics. Like I said, I broke it very quickly after receiving it. Um, I hooked a battery up backwards and fried its motherboard. Oh. So I had to send it back to Hong Kong. They fixed it immediately and sent it right back to me. Wow. Um, and then I made another mistake when I got it. And if you get one of these, please note, I built this entire case and this workstation because oh. of the, how delicate the spider is. Um, so it's being supported. It's just being supported so that I can work on it. Um, but here's what I did. Here's the mistake I made. I put it on the ground and then pushed start, which is so much stress on the servos. I actually stripped teeth off the servo gears. Now the servos that it takes. Again, I'm delaying the start just so we can get some discussion out of the way. The servos that it takes are these super micro oh, yeah. high-tech servos. They don't make these in all Metal Gear versions. Now, I, I, Robugtix guys were telling me that they're planning on another platform that uses custom servos of theirs, mm -hmm. so it's going to be more robust. But these servos are so light that even twisting this really hard, you can strip, strip the gears right away. They're not that expensive. They're about $20 a piece, so I replaced three of them. Um, and there is a tuning video that they just sent me and I haven't had time to use it. So uh, one of the legs is ever so slightly out of the correct alignment, but it still works beautifully. There's a lot of calibration. It's a ton of calibration. When you mean alignment, it's because the board knows the leg is gonna be in a certain place. It in expects to them to be in a specific that. place. So actually when I had two of, I had two of the servos out of alignment, um, its bottom would droop as it walked yeah. because it would, you'd get this uh, sort of accretion of error. At this point, I've got it up and running, uh, I'd say about 90%, and you're not gonna notice, it's freaking gorgeous. Okay, so, uh, here we go. I'm gonna you have a little controller. This is the controller batteries. board. So it has these four joysticks. Um, one is for walking, this is for looking up, 
looking down and looking side to side so it moves the body. This is for actually moving the legs okay. side to side, not just the head like that. And each of these, you can click it um, and change some of the functionality. For instance, you can click the forward walking and make it crab sideways. And that, that's the magic. That's, yeah. that's, it's all programmed here. So you're, these movements that feel very natural right. are processed and then make this move naturally. Now, this also comes, obviously, it's a naked board. Mm -hmm. It comes with four mounting holes so you can build it into your own controller. And what I think I plan to do is try and operate this like a puppeteer would, which means I would put this on a slightly heavy base mm -hmm. so that I can use all, so that I don't have to use any of my fingers to hold the controller. I can use them all to actually do the animation okay. and aspect of it. Okay, so here we go. Turn it on. Yeah, that's, oh. that's one that's slightly out. All right, all right, all right, wake up. There you go. Okay. Nope. <laughs> all right, wake up. He's excited. Dun, dun, dun. He's having a little trouble walking on the smooth felt of my pool table. So there's left, there's right. Now, if I... If I click the forward movement, there we go, let's see, yeah. Oh, I can just inch forward just a little bit. Yeah, so um, this is a crab left, crab right. Looks so alive and the sounds are great. And then uh, you can make him, yeah. you can make him look, uh, look up at you. <laughs> you can also get him to go up higher, oh, which is its own version of kind of freaking creepy. There we go. That yeah. eye really makes it. Yeah, I know, the eye actually really helps look cool, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this thing is, I mean, it's so beautiful. I love even the clicking and the clacking. The legs are incredibly mm -hmm. light. I love this algorithm that they built in that has it check each of its legs every time it stops walking and kind of resets itself. That feels very biological to me. Oh, and so let's see, there's also, if I change this, he, he can turn on his axis, I change it again. He, um, he can... <laughs> Such a fluid movement. Uh, what does this run on in terms of power? Uh, they recommend one of these, a four double A, 4.8 volt uh, nickel metal hydride. Okay. I'd love to ask these guys if this could run on, on lithium polymers, mm -hmm. maybe longer. But on one of these, fully charged, um, they've gotten a regular operation of around 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, which robot, is actually yeah. really nice, a, a nice amount of time to have some fun with it. Um, one of my dogs, Huxley, doesn't even notice this, but it freaks Maggie the hell out. And these guys, Robugtix, they built this as a platform for their board, so they're right. going to release other products with that board in the future. Exactly. And the, I mean, just to really be clear, the amount of, of real math and intense uh, understanding of the way animals and insects move that's built into this is super intelligent. There hasn't been another thing that's this advanced, I don't think, I, you know, that's outside of a university robotics lab. Absolutely. It, the cool thing is that they're also, this is the 3D, this is the 3D printed version, yes. and they're planning an injection molded plastic version. Cheaper, oh, really? Still has a 26 motors, and it's going to be like 500 bucks. I swear I'm going to buy every product they make. <laughs> I, I just, I, this is like, this is, you know, buying stuff the kind of like with the, 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 the sort of impulse buying that I do is, is often a lesson and an exercise in disappointment. Um, and I have to say, I was a little bit like nonplussed when I fried three of the servos just turning it on by not paying attention. But, you know, these guys also released it without a manual and the, the community of knowledge about this is building right now. So actually one of the things that I'm starting to do is make notes about its operation so that I don't forget things and you really understand how to make it. How You'll to be make sharing it work. those troubleshooting skills I back hope with so. that community. Yeah, I absolutely want to because this is, look at this thing, man. This is like what I, everything I ever wanted out of a remote control toy when I was a kid <laughs> or like right now. We live in a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. time. Yes. And, a, and a little bit terrifying. It is, totally. And you can make him, uh, you can make him. <laughs>
Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Adam, for sharing this Absolutely. with us. And, and also, you know, you made a box for it. Oh, yeah. Let's put them back in this box because it's really cool. I've got compartments for charged batteries and for uh, used batteries. Um, I have the, it fits everything that you need for this. Um, and it allows me to carry it around, which I love to do with my favorite toys. Um, and it allows you to work on it without damaging or harming it. So it goes in a very specific, oh, let's get that cord out of the way. One, and two, and three, and four, and Bob's your uncle. I'm not going to be selling these. This is the only one, but if you'd like to build it off of these plans, I I'm happy to take some pictures with measurements as to how this got made. Awesome, and you'll find all that stuff on our site, tested.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have more awesome stuff here from the cave in the future. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.